Hi guys, at the end of this tutorial we'll create a water simulation where we get water to travel through a pipe into a cup. And just to get a better perspective, if we press play over here um, and we go into wireframe mode, you can see the water pouring through the pipe like that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I have no one following me. Please do me a solid. Cheers. Hi guys, in this tutorial, we're gonna model a pipe. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing we want to do, well, numpad one, I'm just gonna hide the, all of this for now, create a new collection, call this collection um, flow, and create a new collection, call this, co oh, it shouldn't be in there, it should be its own collection, call this effector. And let's choose flow, press shift A, and we are going to use a default cube, press tab to go into edit mode, right click, merge vertices at center, press E to extrude, Z to lock it to the Z axis, and uh, now we can shape our pipe. We can press E to lock it to the X axis, numpad seven, E, lock it to the Y axis, E, lock it to nothing, just free flow it. Numpad 1. And once you've got your general layout, you can press, you can select all the verts like that. Control Shift B, pull back, and scroll to give it an, to make sure that nothing is too sharp. And the only thing I'd like to change is press Numpad 1, press G, said and just bring that down a bit yep I'm quite happy with that it's all a little different next thing you want to do is go to object mode and then press object convert to curve once that's a curve we can press shift a and we can use a circle now problem with this is I selected the wrong thing so I'm going to delete that press shift a curve circle that's important now I'm going to select uh, this again, go to the object data properties, click on geometry, click on object, select the Bezier circle that I just added, and then select the Bezier circle, and I can press S to scale it up or minimize it. And I'm going to make it a little bit chunky. Why not? Let's take a look. Yep, nothing is touching. It's still kind of okay. Uh, from a design point of view, I might want to just select this, press tab, just bring these out to somewhere there. There we go. There we go. That looks a little bit neater. Once you've got your general shape that you like, I can right click shade that smooth so it just looks a little bit better. And uh, click object, convert to mesh. Once you've converted to mesh, you can go to normals, auto smooth, and that is looking a lot healthier. You can also quickly check uh, to make sure, one sec, here it is, to make sure that the face orientation is correct, which it is. That is perfect. So now we can remove that. Next thing we want to do is create a water flow, because technically what we just created here is and oh, we already created the collection is an effect or so I'm going to chuck that in there and I'm going to delete the Bezier circle it's no longer needed because we've made the conversion all right next thing we want to do is press shift a mesh and we're going to use a UV sphere press numpad one press G bring it all the way over here press numpad three oh press the squiggly line above the escape button and press press left there we go press G and we want to get it roughly in there and S to scale it out a bit and numpad 1 to make sure it still looks right and we just want to move it slightly numpad uh, left uh, yep that looks correct we can shade that smooth we won't see this in the render I just like to see that smooth no reason has no impact um, right, so next thing we want to do is go to fluid, flow, liquid, 
inflow and we can create an initial velocity and speed we're going to make the initial velocity on the z-axis negative 20 and we know that let's put numpad let's press numpad 1 we know that this is moving on the x-axis so maybe on the x-axis we want it to move 5 degrees so that it maybe even more we can make it 5 degrees 15 now we know it's going to be pushing a hard in this direction somewhere like yeah probably like yeah because of gravity and we can just press 20 here and 20 here to give it some speed and that should do next thing we want to do is press shift a mesh shift a mesh and we are going to add a cube again g z tab right click merge vertices at center and then press e z bring it down like that press tab object now we're going to convert to curve and once it's converted to a curve press tab to go into object mode oh we already were in object mode <laughs> press shift um, shift a and curve circle select this again go to the geometry bevel object bezier circle select the bezier circle and scale it up there we go once you found the right size you select this you can also shade that smooth so long object convert to mesh select the bezier circle x delete select this press tab to go into edit mode alt or oh, press 2 for edge select holding alt and select the edge and press f and obviously convert normals like that and then press numpad 1 maybe press s like that and then press ctrl r and then press s like that just to give it some shape and maybe one more thing I'd like to do is bring this up over here press 3 holding alt select this and maybe just extrude that a bit okay there we go we've got our nice little ice cream type cup right now that we've got everything let's make sure that everything is set up correctly fluid effector planar fluid effector planar and this is our liquid so now we need to create a domain area shift a mesh we're going to use a cube let's delete this we actually have a cube here that I hid I'm going to scale this cube up choose wireframe mode press G and bring this up like that and uh, the only thing I would want to change because it's unnecessary is that over there and just press G and bring this down because that really should be all that is required G Do the same with this one GX there we go now we've got our domain which we're going to call select domain and change it to liquid and this will probably not work immediately and I'll show you why because this is a, this is something that everyone runs into when they first start messing with um, liquid simulations when they want liquid to flow in a pipe you have to make sure mesh is selected type isn't that I'm only doing 100 frames initially and everything else seems okay okay so now I'm also going to select resumable press tab to be in object mode and once I'm there I should be able to press bake and I'm letting this bake through I could pause it but uh, if it works it saves me a bit of time but it shouldn't work <laughs> there we go it didn't work the domain is still here so nothing happened it's free all 
And the reason why is because the resolution is too low. So if we set this to, let's try 100. And let's just change this to 10, just to see if it works. Bake all. And it will take a little longer to bake. I will see you after this is done. All right, so the baking seems to have worked. If we press play, we can see liquid pouring in that direction as expected. Um, so whenever you can't get liquid to go into a simulation, make sure your pipes are big enough. And more importantly, make sure your resolution division is high enough else it won't work. I'm going to try with a lower resolution because I don't really have a graphics card. I have a potato PC. So I'm going to see if 50 will work. I doubt it. And the higher the resolution, the more realistic, but the more you're basically waterboarding <laughs> your graphics card. Let's uh, change this to, I'm going to leave it on 10 just to see if it works. Right, so that doesn't work. So I'm free all, and you can kind of just play with this. I know 100 works. Let's see if 80 works. Bake all. My word, it looks like I'm just going to have to do it at 100. Right, so I'm going to bake this at 100. And then I am going to choose 100 frames because I know it works. And I'm going to bake. And I'll see you guys in probably an hour. All right, so the render is complete. So we can actually go out into, let's look at it in solid view mode. Actually, we need X-ray mode on, or at least like that. Let's press play. And we can see the liquid is moving quite nicely. Some of it is pouring out because it's bouncing off. That's not the end of the world. The only issue with the simulation right now is that it's taking too long for the liquid to reach the end. So what I'm going to do now as a final step to this tutorial, I'm going to set this to 500, change the frames to 500, and I'm going to bake all. And I'll see you guys once this is done. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And there we have it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And now you've learned how to make water flow through pipes in Blender and this is 500 frames um, obviously I'm not rendering this out but this is 500 frames and we should see the water hit the cup let's take a look a lot of the water is being lost oh no okay yes it's still going come on should have put the water more in there and I wouldn't have, wouldn't have had this issue. Ah, in second thought, I'm going to... Uh, let's take a look. It's getting there. Complete waste of water. I was thinking about redoing it, just adjusting the flow, but it's a tutorial. What's the point? Here we go. Get in sun. Let's turn off X-ray mode. Turn on X-ray mode. And as we can see, the cup is still empty. Turn on X-ray mode. I'm actually shocked at how much water is leaking out of this pipe. This is why you always want to have a good plumber. Come on, get in. Oh no, it's not enough power. Let me also select this water, so long, and shade it smooth. We can also add a material to this quickly. And a default material would be a material that has a transmission of one. And let's choose the base color. Here we go. 
Oh, it's coming. Is it going to make it? I think it might. I think at least a little bit of water has to make it. I'm going to select this cup. Let's add a material. Let's make it a black cup. Let's switch to material viewport. Let's select this pipe. And let's give this pipe. Oh, there we go. Liquid is finally going into the cup. There we go. And let's increase the specular to one. I'm quite happy with that. How full do we get this cup? Not very, because all this liquid is poured out. But uh, yeah, the tutorial was a success. I have no subscribers. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> and we can go into the render viewport. It's pause, change this to frame 500, and once it's on 500, let's also change it to the render viewport. We do have to mess with the light source, change it to sun, and just change the power maybe to 25, which is probably a bit too intense, maybe 15, and just so that I can, I'm pad 7, just so that I can see the light source, maybe I just want to bring it out here so I can adjust it nicely. I'm pad 1. And maybe rotate it this way. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. But yeah, so please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm going to render out this single image and obviously if we change the render settings over here we could get a much cleaner image um, that's here we go the render settings uh, if we change it to cycles automatically it's going to look a lot more realistic but uh, I'm going to leave it on Eevee because it's instant and I'm just going to add some of this stuff here. There we go, screen space reflection and turn on transparency over here. And uh, only thing I don't like is this material here. It just doesn't look right. Let's bring it. What happens if we make it a fun color? That looks like plastic. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll do that. Maybe let's make it make it pink or green I don't know orange okay there we go that's a bit better I'm quite happy with that uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and how does it look in our render viewport let's press let's select our camera and let's just bring this down and maybe reduce this to 45 or 40 or 60. Yep, there we go. And all I need to do now is render this image.